just here. I'm so excited to say I found one of the cheapest craft chocolate advent calendars on the market this year at $19 US. It's from Canada. Meet the Maguire advent calendar. So Maguire chocolate is based in St. Andrews, New Brunswick, Canada. And it's in this box because I bought the refill, which there's not much to it. So if you buy the full thing, it's $45 Canadian, but then you can buy the refill with just the chocolate for 20 bucks. And I actually really like this. I love the idea of having less packaging, less waste, and while they are labeled, I love it as a choose your own adventure because you could just randomly pick stuff out and put it anywhere and you'd be good. So for the sake of this video not being, you know, an hour long, I am gonna only try the first seven, but I will do them in order for the sake of proper spoilers. Number one here is the Arhuacos. Please forgive my Spanish, 70% from Sierra Nevada in Colombia. And they're saying it'll have macadamia, nut, and fig notes. Nice. I do like off the bat that it's two discs, which is gonna be great for sharing later. Or saving one for yourself if you really like something. It is rather thin, but it's a good amount of chocolate. It smells very earthy. Yeah, very musty earthy. Cheers. This is super creamy bar just opens up with this wonderful slow melt. I see what they mean about macadamia nut and fig, because it has that macadamia nut nuttiness and a bit, I wouldn't call it chalkiness, but same kind of warm nut note. And then there's almost a coffee note and then the sweetness of fig and red fruit. It's a really nice bar. I do think it has a bit of a chalky end note, but the opening is just so pretty. Number two here is a 75% bourbon dark chocolate. The origin is Maya Mountain in Belize. Maya Mountain's one of my favorite origins right now. It's got really beautiful fruity notes. I'm not a fan of bourbon though. So we're gonna see how this goes. But the ingredients are simple, you know, cacao beans, cane sugar, cocoa butter, bourbon. It smells a booze. And there's a fermented funk to it. It's got a sharpness. We'll see. Cheers. It's accurate to flavor in that it's very cleanly bourbon. It's actually even got some neat vanilla after notes to it. I'm not really getting much of the chocolate because the booze is so intense to me, but it is interesting. I would really like to have Shay try this because she would know what to say about it and whether or not it was an accurate representation of bourbon. I'm just distracted by the booziness of it all. Next, number three, we have the white chocolate pistachio 43%, which immediately I'm quite impressed because they're saying it's ground in throughout and I'm not seeing any of it. That's pretty impressive. And for the record, white chocolate is chocolate. It is a chocolate product. This has more cacao in it in cocoa butter than some conventional milk chocolates have on the market. It's chocolate. I'm not smelling any pistachio, but I am smelling that sweetness I associate with cocoa butter. It's not quite a vanilla note, but it is a distinct sweetness. Almost a cookie-like sweetness. Cheers. I'm tasting kind of the impact of the pistachio rather than a distinct pistachio flavor because you have this like less sweet, just cocoa butter with a little bit of earthy end note and then a hint of salt at the end. And I kind of want to try it with pistachio inclusions just to see how it behaves because I wish I could taste more of the pistachio, but I wonder how that would impact the flavor and the experience of the bar. So maybe inclusions would be the way to go. All right, number four here is a Mocha 56 with the origin being from Oko Karim in the Dominican Republic. I I'm not eating this. I cannot handle coffee products. You think I can't handle booze? Coffee is worse. So none for me. That being said, Oko Karib can do kind of two notes, I feel like. It can be really caramelly or really red fruit. I think caramel with coffee and chocolate could be excellent. So I'm very curious if someone who likes coffee could comment on this one. I'm not touching it. I will have number eight then instead. So number five is their Buccaneer Hank, which is a 70% Colombian cacao conch with sea salt from Newfoundland Salt Company. And I'm guessing it's called Buccaneer Hank because he's a salty sea cat pirate. I also really like the art. It's very cute. It smells very earthy. Like not mushroom, but that earth mustiness could be fun. Cheers. So the salt gives it this pop of sweetness at the very beginning, but then it gets really dark and really peaty super fast. I think I have like this roller coaster flavor going on. I feel like really deep earth roasted, but not roasty chocolate. This is fun. So number six, we have the, oh, I'm gonna get this wrong. Bundi Bugyo, really cool name. 70% from the same name district in Uganda. This has apparently a note of cinnamon, oak, and peat which means I'm probably not gonna like it very much. I'm not a big fan of that funky peatiness that this like San Martin could get. And number five for that matter. Oh yeah, it's peaty. Cheers. 
and the tasting note description is super on point. So it opens with kind of this warming feeling, kind of like cinnamon, but not on the nose cinnamon. And then as it builds, you get this earthiness. I am surprised at how soft it is though. Like it ends just very much a whisper of a bar after all that intensity at the beginning, which makes it really nice. Like it's a nice rounded note, almost a palate cleanser bar. Now this is unique on several levels. So this is an unroasted 70%, which is already pretty unique. This is a blend of everything in the shop. So even if I bought this bar tomorrow, it would taste different than this one. That's pretty cool. I will say though that unroasted is not everyone's cup of tea. It can bring a lot of notes to the table that not everyone enjoys. So this is a nice way to try it out and see what you think. Also just found out that you can be allergic or sensitive to unroasted cacao. So it's definitely worth testing on that front. Yeah, wow, it is super earth. Cheers. Whoa, there's a lot happening at once. There's like red fruit and a lot of astringency, but then not, there's definitely earth and a sweetness. There's like pops of stuff happening everywhere. It's really hard to keep up actually, but it ends less astringent than I thought, like a little bit of dryness and then red fruit. And it's kind of minty even. This is exactly the kind of thing that my friends and I would sit down and eat just to go, what did we just eat? And I always have a good time with those. So I'd probably get it just for that. Oh, I'm gonna mispronounce this. So last for this tasting, number eight is the Adosmak 70% from Tabajon, Guatemala. And it has tasting notes apparently of cookie, fudge, and red fruit, which is very much up my alley. I'm super curious to try this actually. Not super intensely scented, so we'll see. Cheers. And it is a very tart red fruit and very sour. I was expecting more of a warm cookie fudge. It's very tart which might just be this particular production because batches can vary so much. It is juicy tart though. Like it's surprisingly like eating a gusher that can happen with some of these chocolates. It also has more red wine notes than I was expecting, which is what's bringing a lot of that tart sourness to the table. And that's fun. Just not what I was hoping for. I'm glad I tried it though. So my thoughts. First up, this is a screaming deal for trying a brand. This has a giant range of stuff, including another white chocolate, which means you get to try 25 different chocolates from them for $25 Canadian. So if you're interested in trying Maguire, you're on the fence and it happens to be November, get this, like holy crud. Also, I'm a huge fan of this size. It's a great amount of chocolate to have a piece to break off and melt. It's a really nice disc size to get a lot of expression of flavor, which seriously, like how thick chocolate can be really impacts how you taste it. It's super neat. And so I really appreciate these and hope they sell the thins by themselves because I would buy these, okay? like. Chocolate thins are amazing for snacking on. I didn't like all of the bars. I feel like I liked about 60% of the bars, but that's really neat to find out in such a cheap, accessible way. I'm sad that when I started filming, I think there was one left, so it's likely already sold out, but I hope you get to try it out in 2021. As always, it's super great hanging out with you. I'd love to hear from you in the comments if you've tried McGuire chocolate or what advent calendar you wish I'd cover probably next year, given how sold out things are. As a reminder, the live stream is on this coming Saturday at 7 p.m. Pacific time, so hoping to catch some of you there. And with that, I will see you in the next video. Later!